What is up guys, Gabe here. Welcome back to another video and today we're gonna be talking about cars. I'm actually shooting this car right now. Sounds like a dream. Yeah. So yes, cars, but not about cars themselves, but about photographing cars. The other day I was offered a job where I had to photograph some really cool cars like you just saw. And I thought it was a good opportunity for me to kind of take you guys through uh, this type of photo shoot. My original idea was to do a daily vlog or a day vlog and have you guys join me through that day so I can explain what was happening and what we were doing and all that stuff. But I learned something very important that day. What I learned was that I suck at vlogging. It's not my thing, it's not what I what I do. I focused all my time doing the work that I had to do, which is very important, and I forgot to vlog. And when I got back home, the footage that I had, I couldn't even make something, you know, it was, it was atrocious, guys. And I couldn't put that up for you guys. So I decided to sit down at my computer now that I've done with the job and all the photos have been edited and kind of talk about the job, uh, talk about the gear that I use, talk about why I use that gear, uh, settings and stuff to get the images that I got from that shoot. Well, let's jump right into some shots. Let's see, uh, let's see what I got and uh, I'm gonna try to explain to you guys how I got that shot, okay? Look at this guy. You wanna be part of the video? Yeah, is that it? You wanna be part of the video? You're in it right now, I'm just saying. All right, so a little backstory on the photo shoot. I had to wake up at 4 a.m. to be at a racetrack by 6 a.m. because the racetrack was about a little bit more than an hour away from my house. So I had to drive all that time to get there. So I had to be ready and I had to be there on time. So I had to wake up like at four in the morning, get ready, head out, and then get to the photo shoot to be there at six. The idea was to get some shots that were super sunrisey with the, with the nights get light and the painted skies color of the sky and all that stuff. We were lucky enough that the day was beautiful and it started out great and that we could get these images. And this is one of the images that we got with this Ferrari. I had the control to tell a driver where to park the car, how, how to position the car and all that stuff. Unluckily for me, I wasn't the one getting to drive those cars, which would have been my dream. But, you know, getting to photograph them is, uh, Close enough, right? Yeah, this is one of the cars. I shot this uh, this photo with this right here, with uh, my 85mm lens. This I use this lens mostly throughout the day because I really wanted the cars to stand out. I really wanted the cars to be the main part of the image. If I were to use the wide angle lens for most of the shots, the car would have been too much into the elements, into the environment and not enough standing out. So I decided to go ahead and just like pop in my, my 85 and use this lens mostly throughout the day for this photo shoot. So this photo and a lot of the ones that you're gonna see were gonna be shot with, uh, with the 85 mil lens. And of course I shot it with my Canon 5D Mark IV. So this, uh, particular image I love because uh, the way that the sunlight in the morning is accentuating the lines of the car and it kind of makes it look meaner and like pop out of the frame so I really like that. As far as settings, I don't really remember the exact settings. I know that I was trying to shoot at the lowest ISO possible, probably around ISO 100 here. I was shooting pretty wide open. I was shooting at 1.4 with this lens because this is a pretty good lens. It's so sharp that I could shoot wide open and not be worried about the picture not being sharp or the car not being in perfectly in focus like I wanted to. So I pretty much kept this wide open, my ISO at 100, and then I just played with the shutter speed to get different looks. This is probably one of my favorite shots for this car because just it just stands out on, on the track. Now to get this image, uh, since my camera does have live view, I turned my live view on and I pretty much sat the camera on the ground. I kind of like leveled the shot, make sure it was straight, and boom, I took the shot from the ground level, and I think that the way that the shot is composed really makes the car stand out and really makes it like the main feature of the photo. I wanted to show the track, the sunlight, the way that the light was falling, and accentuate not only the brand name of the car, but the brand name of the dealership that hired me to, to do the shoot. And 
I could only do that if I was shooting a little bit wider than 85 millimeters, so I, I went ahead and, and used my 35 millimeter for that. This particular scene was difficult to, to shoot because it was a white space and I was shooting a white car and I didn't want things to, I didn't want the image to fall flat. I wanted to create some type of interest in that image. Thankfully, the model that we had, they could get something with a pop of color like this red dress that she's wearing so she stands out. However, the challenge with this is that the main focus of this shoot is the cars, not the model. So how do you make a car stand out and the model not when she's wearing red and the car and the environment is white? That was one of the biggest challenges for this particular scene that we were shooting. And by positioning the car in the center of the frame and making it dead center and just being like frontal plane, I think that that makes the viewer look at the car and see the person as an addition, see the person as an accessory to the image instead of something that's gonna overpower the shot. Now part of my job as well was to capture details of the car from the inside. Now for that, I had to pop in my 24 mil 1.4. So that's what I did for the interior shots of the car. I took the 24 because I could shoot pretty much the entirety of the inside of the car in one shot and make sure that everything was included so that the person or the viewer that was going to look at these images could see how the car would look from the inside if you were to sit on the inside of the car. Now one of the funnest things that I got to do that day was hang out of the side window of another car to follow one of these really cool McLarens uh, on the racetrack. The mood board that they had created for me already had a lot of cool shots of the cars running on the streets and you would see things like a, a little bit of motion blur in the background and all this stuff. I wanted to recreate that for my client. We hopped on the track and we were going about I would say in between 35 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour to get these shots. Since I was dragging the shutter, we didn't need to go that fast to recreate the look of the car going fast. By having the car go slower, I can make sure that the car didn't move out of my frame too much or too erratically so that it would lose focus, but the environment around the car would still be moving because the car that I'm photographing and the car that I'm photographing from are moving at the same speed. For these particular shots, I wanted to include the entirety of the car, so I was shooting strictly with my 24 mil, and the car was pretty close to the to the lead car. And it was really, really fun to shoot. This track is, is, is an oval track. The walls of the track are pretty slanted. It felt like we were shooting on the Matrix or something because we were like sideways on the track and it was super awesome. First time I experienced something like that and thankfully I got to take pictures of it, so it was awesome. There are some vantage points that I cannot get with my camera, therefore I had to whip out my drone. I had my drone with me because my client had seen my drone shots from my website and Instagram and they requested for me to bring the drone because they thought I could get some cool pictures or some cool video footage and they were right. Logically, after spending a lot of time shooting with my camera, I popped out my drone out of my bag, I threw it up in the air, and I got different vantage points to tie the whole story together. And these are some of the images that I got with, uh, with my drone. A totally different perspective than what you're used to when you're on the ground shooting the car. Pretty much, that was the entirety of the shoot. Basically, I got to take pictures of really cool cars in a racetrack. And although it would have been fun to show you guys that directly, I need to learn how to vlog. I'm sorry. I promise I'll get better at that for you guys. Understanding light, understanding how light fall can play a role into giving an inanimate object some character and essentially making that inanimate object like a car come to life. It's something that's gonna help anybody out trying to shoot, not, not only cars, but it could be motorcycles, it could be uh, buildings, it could be anything. As long as you understand how light plays a role into giving you a, a certain mood or a certain uh, character, then you're good to go and you can photograph anything, I would say. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope you picked up something or learned something. You know, my idea with this channel is to give you guys something almost every week so that you guys could learn about photography, about the industry, or even just camera settings or, or what you do in certain situations. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And 
I'll see you guys on the next video.